So I have something that's going to change your life forever. There this morning. God's, God's word is always there for us to do that in our life when we avail ourselves to him. Amen. There's, uh, you know, I was just talking with somebody how, how different things are today <laughs> than just, uh, just 20 years ago. But you go back 30 years ago, and then, of course, I was um, reading to 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 Braden, um, and uh, actually, I had my computer, and, and and I was I was showing him how I can type. I was, I, was, I can type pretty pretty well because I had to take typing in high school, and I was describing to him a typewriter, and he said, "Oh, it's it's like a computer." I said, "No." We didn't have computers. <laughs> we actually had these things, and I tried to describe it to him. You know, you, you push on this thing, and a, and a hammer goes up, and it goes through a, an ink ribbon, and it puts a thing on the... And, and, and if you want to fix it, you have to put a different ink ribbon up there and hit the same letter again. And and he's... he's and thank goodness he doesn't have to go back and experience that. But there was something... <laughs> I, you don't you don't see that, that that ability to type like today like back then you know you know what I'm talking about and and uh, because it, it required that more I mean you can just talk into stuff now and dictate it you know and that that's what it is but how magnified um, are the options to us every day and I was just thinking about how. Um, there's, it's, I was thinking all, almost like triage, <laughs> you know, I, I, my, my, uh, my study break in, in college was MASH. I don't know if you remember MASH or not, but, um, and that was my study break. It came on after the news at 1030 and, and I would watch that and, and, um, uh, then I go back to study until 12. I had a real routine I went through and, um, but what do they do in, on MASH? The, the thing was that they get all the people coming in and they have to do triage. They have to figure out which ones they're actually going to work on. Which ones really matter? With, which ones they can make a difference? <laughs> so I, I believe this is one of the biggest challenges we have in our life is there's a lot of things given us as an option. Even in God, we get stuff coming at us all the time. It's like, what difference does it make? You know, I think a lot of things from God, we just say, what difference does it make if I do that or not? If I stay pure before I get married? You know, if I abstain from this or that, what difference does it make? And, and then you get somebody, some big time person saying that it's all okay. And so, well, I might as well just do it. You know, a lot of options available. What of the, all the things coming to me in my life, which things, what difference do they make, and which one am I actually going to commit myself to? Because it becomes very important, some things. And I was thinking about some of these things, and of course I like to refer to this because I know Laura has a real understanding of this, but my appreciation of mouthwash has increased since I've gotten a little bit older. I've realized that, um, that, that, that it's, it's good to brush, and actually you're supposed to brush actually for two minutes. I got me one of those you know motorized things that... It lets you know when two minutes is done, you know, and you go around and you're, and, 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 but you know what? I found out that when I, I do my whole brushing routine and then I take some mouthwash and I, and I, my wife doesn't like when I do that because I like, I like to, you know, flush it back and forth through your teeth, you know, and I find out when I get done with that, there's some little morsels that come out, you know, that, that weren't, oh, come on, we're real here, right? Does anybody identify with it? Yeah, it's like, it's like, when I was a kid, it's like, what difference does it make? I just want to go to bed, you know? But you don't realize that everything you're doing, make, there's a difference. And you have to decide which things you're going to triage and say, no, this is the difference I want to make in my life. And I'm going to do what it takes to make that happen. You know, I grew up in eastern Colorado. We had farmers in our church, and um, we had uh, non-homogenized milk all the time. Well, not amen in the spring, because the cows would eat the, eat the weeds, and man, that stuff tasted terrible. Um, 
I don't know if you, have you ever tasted it like that? Well, they, yeah, I, it must have just been where I where we were out up there. But these, you know, these these cows. Well, I'll tell you what it was. It was organic, I guess. You know. But man, I liked I liked whole milk too. It's like we take that that milk and, and shake it up, you know, and, and and make get the cream in there with it, and then man, I drink a whole you know glass of that. Just drink it down, drink it down. But I found out that that that, that especially through my wife, that there's there's a difference between regular milk and organic milk and organic food. It's like, I just want to eat something, you know. It's like, <laughs> just give me some food, you know. <laughs> but I actually have my, 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 my friend up in, in Idaho, he actually, they actually are certified organic farmers. You know, the, the, the ground, I guess, doesn't get any pesticides or something. And, and, and there's a difference that it makes, and you, don't, you can't see it right now. And it's going to take a lot more effort, but the results are going to be more than you can imagine. You have to get some information about it. It's going to take some work, but you're going to have to decide, what am I, or am I just going to say, ah, fooey on that. I'm just going to do whatever I want because it's just fun. Get me a bag of Lay's potato chips and some pork and beans. That was my philosophy, right? Uh, you know, in, in, in college, you know, or right afterwards when I'm on my own, you know, and you're just hungry and you, you want to watch a movie, and it's like potato chips and pork and beans. I put down the whole bag, you know, and the whole can, you know. It's like, well, that, that's, that's the dip of choice back then. They got all these other dips now, you know. <laughs> but that, I, think, I think there's still some of those laced potato chips that I'm dealing with even today. <laughs> You know, because there, 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 you don't realize that you're establishing something even in, in the way you're made. Just by what, what you're eating and these things that are going on. It makes a difference. And of course, you know where I'm going to go with this to some degree. Not yet. Hopefully, I'm kind of holding it off a little bit. But it makes a difference. All through history, it's been people who have seen it as a difference that is history changing. We are specifically in this point of time, I believe, in history to make a difference. Now, we can say, what difference does it make? I just want to go to bed. I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to pray in the Spirit. I don't want to be holy. I want to hold grudges. I want to. But it's just like, it's like Braden is trying to get him to take a bath. He's, well, I took a bath, you know, a couple days ago, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was gloriously saved. We had a wonderful service last week. <laughs> Every time we get in the presence of God, there's an opportunity for flesh to die and for, for righteousness to, to thrive. And that's why it becomes necessary for us to say, it does make a difference what I choose to do with something here. We're going we're gonna to talk specifically about what we're going to be going into in the next few days. Um, and I just want to challenge us in this. Why do we fast? Why do we pray? What difference does it make? And I really want to challenge us in this because it, it, it makes as much difference as you choose for it to make. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on this a little bit. I know, I know Emma said about this, that, you know, just choose any. Let's, let's say, let's, let's, don't make, let's, let's don't make this a light thing. You know, I'm going to choose to uh, fast wearing socks. You know, let's make it real. You know, this is life. <laughs> because... What is happening when we do fast? The flesh is being set aside because the flesh is the God that gets before you and the God. And your flesh is continually wanting to put an image between you and God that will keep you from accessing what is yours in him. 
and it's, it's actually unrighteousness. It's, it's stuff that we have to go to continually and say, wash me anew. Make me fresh in you. Amen? What difference does it make? It makes all the difference in the world. I wonder how many times through history devastation took place because it didn't make any difference to the person that could have affected it. There's something in our lives today that it makes a difference what we do with this. Amen? This isn't something that you just say, no, it, it doesn't really matter. God loves, he knows my heart. It doesn't really matter. No, it matters. <laughs> I want to say, what does God think about it? Did you know he's a most holy God? He doesn't put up with anything out of line. And the only reason any one of us today can even look up to his face is because of the blood of Jesus. We are no better than anybody else in the world today. Amen? And to expect for him to respond to anything we say based upon something that we are good in is just ridiculous. Amen? There has to be a complete removal of these things. Can we be challenged in this today? Can we? Because I want to say, man... I don't want to let this opportunity pass me by that's before us. You know, we fasted before. I've done it before. We we had a time of fasting this last fall. I think it's good every time we do. But I just want to say, man, can we we take this on? God help us. So I, I want to look at some examples in the word. Just about some times when this, actually, when this was first initiated, this concept, I believe, was with Moses. And Moses was a man that, that, that uh, had a very, very unique relationship with God, didn't he? I mean, he, 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 he obviously was very humble. He recognized that if, 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 if there was anything that he was going to be able to do it was because of God. And God showed him that, didn't he? I mean, he, he established that. He made it very clear. And because of that, he understood that it wasn't anything in him that was going to make a difference in the presence of God. It was going to be something where he was going to have to remove anything in himself when he came before the presence of God. So, one of the most amazing things about God... (laughs) You know, and I just said this, but he's holy. He's, he's without compromise. He doesn't, he doesn't say it's okay to just do this or just to do that. No, it makes a difference to God. So he's got a problem. He's got a whole bunch of people in the earth that don't have a clue about how holy he is or how to live before him. Remember that? That's what happened with, that's why Noah had to come along because God was going to destroy everybody. So I, 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 this isn't working. I created mankind to have communion with, to have communion with the most holy God. There has to be a level of honoring him in his holiness, right? And so the flood had to take place to get rid of mankind, to reset, to get things on a different tack. But God's holiness never did change. It doesn't ever change. With Jesus, it didn't change. It just got, we just became enabled to access his holiness now and to be changed. But the, but the impetus hasn't changed upon us to have this standard that he put in place with Moses. What, did, what happened with Moses? He took the people out of, out of uh, Egypt, didn't he? That was an amazing thing in itself. All these people, they... They didn't really know anything about God. They heard some stories about people in their past. They didn't know how they were supposed to live. They didn't have a law yet. Why why, why did the law uh, uh, come to pass? It's because God has a standard for things. You don't kill people. You don't go lay with your neighbor's wife. Well, people were doing that kind of stuff. You know, so might as well, you know. It's kind of going back to that now. It's like, you take God out of stuff and the standard just goes completely shot. 
There's nothing, right? So Moses came along and, and God said, You're, I'm going to show you something. And, and here, this was the most significant thing because it allowed who God was to begin to be seen in just 10 little commandments. Isn't it interesting how the magnitude of God, he makes it simple. He said, you know, if you can just, just give yourself to, to, to these 10 things alone. And the problem was they were doing it out of a sinful nature, right? They couldn't do it themselves. So, so anyway, let me just read this. Deuteronomy 9, 9 through 10. When I had gone up into the mountain to receive the tablets of stone, the tablets of the covenant which Jehovah made with you, then I stayed in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. Can you imagine? Now, I believe there was, there, but, but this is, see, I think this is the challenge for us. Are, are we really drawn on, on the, the, the resource of the spirit for our life? Or are we trying to just compromise? But th- and and this, this goes into every part of our life. That's why I think, I think food is a, a necessary part that we can, we can take on with this. I know, you know. We, we, we need to do things in wisdom to where we, we can function and whatnot. But it needs to be enough for us to say, okay, this is my life. God is my source. But what hap- did it make a difference to the children of Israel whether Moses fasted for 40 days? The Ten Commandments came as a result of one man saying, it makes a difference. And nobody had ever preached him a sermon on this. He just said, there's going to be nothing in my life between me and God. He recognized the need for there to be nothing. He took 40 days. Didn't eat bread or drink water. Is that amazing? Did it make a difference? And Jehovah delivered to me two tablets of stones written with the finger of God. And on them, according to all the words which Jehovah spoke with you in the mountain, out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. Okay, I'm just going to go down here just a little bit further. And I took the two tablets and threw them out of my hands and broke them before your eyes. He's talking to the people. And I fell down before Jehovah as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. You would have thought that after you had been through a 40 day and 40 night fast, you'd say, none of that. Thank you. God, I've done that and I never will do that again. But you know what? He, he saw the value of it. He broke the tablets and he said, you know what? I'm going to have to go do this again. What was taking place in the fasting that he set himself to? Did it say that God told him to do this? No, he, he, he chose to do this. Where did that motivation come from? Because he had this perspective of a most holy God that he had no business to be in the presence of. But he also had an understanding and a responsibility to the people that he was going to lead. And he recognized the responsibility. This is not just me. It makes a difference for me. But my fasting before God will never be just about me. Amen? Amen. That's why I think we have to have a different perspective, a different reason why we're doing this. Amen? And either ate bread nor drink, drank water because of all your sins which you sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of Jehovah to provoke him to anger. So here is this man that spent 40 days, 40 nights fasting, nothing. He goes up, God writes his finger in some stones. It's a most holy God that he is just totally in reverence of. And he goes down and all these people are worshiping an, an idol. He said, I just, I just received this from God. And he lost it. Okay. He lost it. So here's another example. Did it make a difference what Moses did though? Did it make a difference what fasting was for him? Amen? So here's another example. Jehoshaphat. Amazing story. So he had these armies that were 
were gathered together against him and they were, it was an overwhelming army. He was not going to be able to, to defeat it. You know, sometimes you wonder uh, if you got your own army, sometimes you don't need God, <laughs> right? But there needs to be in the heart of a person who is devoted unto God, this continual desperation for God. Amen? But anyway, so this, the, the armies of, I, I believe it was the Ammonites were coming up against him and, and some other ones. And uh, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek Jehovah and called for a fast throughout all Judah. Now, I thought this was interesting. And this is why I believe us as a, as a body, it, there, there's another element. There's a personal fast that we can have and have a, make a difference. But there's something that happens when we come together and we agree together. There's an effect against a whole enemy that we can have. Right? And Judah gathered themselves to ask of Jehovah. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek Jehovah. Now, here's what's really cool. And this is a necessary step that, that we're going to look at, though. The first thing that needs to happen is the looking unto Jehovah. I think a lot of times there's, there's a temptation to be looking at your situation when you go into the presence of, a, of an amazing God. <laughs> the first thing that needs to take place is the looking to him, the exalting him, okay? Okay? And all Judah stood before Jehovah with their little ones, their wives, and their sons. And the spirit of Jehovah came on Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, in the midst of the congregation. And he said, listen, all Judah, and you people of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, so says Jehovah to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Are you familiar with that phrase? I believe that for every move of God that is, you know, you can look at it from the outside and see that something happened. There was a preparation in the hearts of people. God's looking over the whole earth for, for those whose hearts are right towards him. How is a heart right towards him? It's not right towards him if there's a bunch of junk. If it's not prepared. Amen? Amen? So, let me see. I skipped over a little bit. So he, he, he actually gets up and he begins to exalt God, first of all. And we see this happens actually in the New Testament also when they, when they uh, had accusations or threats coming against them. You know, that's, that's kind of the atmosphere that I, I feel like we're in right now in America. I feel greatly threatened I feel like there's a lot of attacks that are going to come directly against the body of Christ. So, the challenge is to not become fixated upon the threats, but to become fixated upon the answer. Amen? And so that's what happened. He got up and he began to magnify God and say what God had done and what he was going to do. And then he said, now behold our opposition, what's coming against us. And look at what happened. They, they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you people of Jerusalem, believe in Jehovah your God, and so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, and so you shall be blessed. Don't you like this? They're getting ready to go against an enemy, and he starts talking about believing in God. Isn't this wonderful? You know what? This does not happen when you're still being intoxicated by the world. This happens as a result of a preparation that only fasting can enable. Where you're actually looking unto God. And this is a challenge I, I'm, I'm having for myself in the next few days. It's like, let's just get rid of everything. And I want to challenge us in this. Let's just say, God, show me these things. You know, we were praying about it the other day. It's like sometimes we don't even know things that are. <laughs> it's 
like those, exa- you know, somebody that's got a little remnant coming out of their nose, you know, that you don't even, unless you have a friend that helps you see it, you know. You get into the presence of God, he'll start showing you stuff. You didn't even know was there. If you're asking him to, and you're saying, God, just watch this, because I'm getting rid of this thing that I thought I had to have for life, because it means so much, it makes a difference to me what you say to me. Otherwise, you can get in the presence of a most holy God, and he's saying, man, you got a booger on your face, and you say, you don't even hear him say it because you're so consumed with, does that make sense? It says, believe in your God. And he consulted with the people and he appointed singers to Jehovah and praisers to praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise Jehovah for his mercy endures forever. Isn't it going to be interesting to go back and hear what they came up with for music like that? It's like, so how many... uh, Lyrics can you have for praise the beauty of holiness? You know, it's like, <laughs> how, how creative did they get? I, I, I don't know, but for them, it was life or death. And they could have said, what are we doing singing songs? We should be practicing with our swords. We should be leaning on our understanding. We should be, we should be learning the art of war. We should be running away. <laughs> we should be giving up. What difference does it make to sing a song unto God? What difference does it make to fast unto him? What difference does it make to set aside a part of your life and say, I'm not going to have that anymore, something I'm leaning upon? You know what? God's not changing. He's waiting for us to change. And it's in our changing that the, that the difference is made. It makes a difference what we choose to do in times like this. Is he really our God? I, I, you know, I saw that phrase and it's like <laughs> a lot of these people, he, they probably weren't really seeing him as their God for a while there. Right? Right? And we have to be certain, we have to say, is he really our God? Because if so, when we're going into this storm that's before us, and, the, and these were, this was a real army coming against them. And they said, I know, let's put some singers out there. But those guys are the weakest ones, you know? They, all they can do is play the guitar, you know? It's like, <laughs> well, when God is your God, and you know that he's really your source, you let go of all those other things that you thought you could depend on. Amen. For the sons of Ammon and Moab stood up against the people of Mount Seir to completely kill and destroy. And when they had made an end of the people of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. So what happened? So you got these different groups that were rose up against Israel and God confused them. This is the wonderful thing about where we are in this day that we live. We have a most holy, righteous God that in righteousness is the ability to wisely make decisions. With unrighteousness, this is the thing that's going on right now. There is no hope for success with wickedness like this. With unrighteousness. But there is a need, if you're going to be on the side of righteousness, for it not to be yours, for it to be God's. I mean, this is critical. Because what God can do, you, you put it in the hands of God. You begin to magnify God. You fast unto God, and he can take what the enemy meant for evil, and he can turn it against itself, to where it self-destructs. That's what happened. They, they didn't even get to the battlefield. And all their enemies killed each other. They got there and they were all dead. And you know when they were all dead? They didn't. I don't quite understand this. Back then when they went out to battle. They took all their riches with them. I know. When I go to battle. I'm going to take all my money. No I'm going to. I'm going to take Larry with me. And just use all his guns. Especially the. 
50 caliber. <laughs> something that's effective, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do something that's going to make a difference. <laughs> the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And you can confess that all day long. But if you haven't allowed God to actually become your God and for flesh to be put aside, it's just a nice notion. It's not reality. It makes a difference how we triage what we say is important in our life. What makes a difference to me? Amen? All right. How are we doing? Y'all blessed? All right, how many know about Esther? Esther's preparation together with the people saved the nation. Did you know that fasting was involved in this? There's, an, there's a preparation for honoring the spirit of almighty God. It's not a God thing. It's not an achieving thing. It's not a works thing. It's just you honoring God. When you set aside this time and you say, set aside, and I, and I want to challenge us in the, in the area of food. <laughs> if it's a meal, if it's something, it's like, I'm, I'm going to set aside this time and it's going to be unto God. And, and God, this is, I, I'm doing this unto you. Amen? What's happening in that? It's not, I think we have to be careful that there's a motive of actually trying to earn something from God in that even. You know what I mean? Yeah. Our, our looking is unto God. And then we say, and now God, behold these things that are coming against me, but my focus has stayed on you. Don't you like that? They, they, they actually prayed that before in, in that previous example. They actually said, God magnify you, but now behold our thing. Now what are we going to do? Oh, well, we're going to just keep praising God. And I think that's necessary for us in this time right now. It's critical that we be praying right now. But it's important that we see how to pray. Amen? We don't pray afraid. This is not a big deal. This is the thing that's and I'll just say this, but this is the thing that's bothered me about the coronavirus. It's not a big deal. It's squashable with medicine. It's squashable with my prayer, you know? It's a little bug, and it's been novelized. But that's everything about the enemies that way. So you have to make God big. You have to make him exalted. So anyway, so Esther, she was afraid. She was coming back, right? <laughs> Mordecai. She was coming back at him and saying, but if I do that, I, I could be killed. You know, this is the challenge for us in this time is to become to where we're not afraid of what might happen to us. No, we get, we, this, this is what, what fasting needs to be for us right now is the removal of, of anything in our flesh that would cause us to be in fear. And we can be before our God with total trust. But look what happened. So Mordecai commanded them to answer Esther, do not think within yourself that you shall escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. So remember what happened. She's a beautiful woman. She, you know, the king likes her and everything. But what's happening is that the, the, the threat is going to be against all the Jews. Here's the deception the enemy wants to make is, this is not going to touch me. So what difference does it make? What touches this nation touches you. What touches the church touches you. Amen? And what you do touches the church and this nation. Amen? For if you are completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance shall arise to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. See, this is the thing that I think is, is perilous in America right now is, is I think there's been uh, a giving up of authority by the church to things in the world. And a desire to be familiar with the world more than God. And try to compromise and say, 
the grace of God is going to allow me to be a friend with the world. And you can't have friendship with the world and honor God. That's what fasting needs to be. Cutting off the stuff in the world. Amen? So anyway, this preparation was so necessary for Esther Did it make a difference? Yes. But you and your father's house shall be destroyed. And who knows whether you have come to the kingdom of kingdom for a time like this. We have come to the kingdom for a time like this. And what the enemy's biggest challenge for us when we say, okay, we're going to have a time of fasting is, it doesn't make any difference what you do. Not really. No, it makes a difference. Especially right now. I believe it's incumbent upon us to say the difference is all mine. Take, take ownership of it. I came to the kingdom for a time as, just like this. Yeah. Amen? And it will make as much difference as we give it. Yeah. And Esther said to return to Mordecai this answer. Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. And do not eat nor drink three days, night or day. My maidservants and I will also fast in the same way. And so I will go into the king which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. What she was getting ready to do was violate what had been established. But she was going to do it after giving herself to the presence of God, leaning on him. Amen? Did that make a difference? What happened? It completely turned. Completely turned. Daniel. So Daniel was a very godly person, wasn't he? And he was, he was somebody that prayed all the time and did everything else. And yet he would have these visions of what was happening to the, to the nation of Israel. And he took it on personally. So the fasting, you know, a lot of times we talk about a Daniel fast. What was he fasting about? He was fasting about the sins of Israel. You know, you can say, well, everything's cool in my life. I'm, I'm, me and the man upstairs, we're tight, you know. Don't you like hearing people talk like that? You know? <laughs> well, what about this nation that you live in that's on a rapid descent to the pit? It should be a coming upon us to say, I'm going to set aside my time. I'm going to set aside a fasting. And it's, I'm identifying with the very people that I care about. Amen? I set my face to the Lord God to seek by prayer and holy desires with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. What's Daniel's doing this? Did he what was he at fault for? He said, I'm taking on this is called intercession. So this isn't where you're just getting in between. You're actually identifying. You know that Jesus ever liveth to intercede for us? Right now, he's 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 committed to praying for us, to, to identifying with where we're at right now. And, and being a part of that in prayer. Does that make a difference? Daniel 9, 18. Oh my God, bow down your ear and hear. Open your eyes and behold our ruins and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our prayers before you on account of our righteousness, but because of your great mercies. Don't you like that? Isn't that amazing? Oh, Jehovah. Hear, O Jehovah, forgive. O Jehovah, listen and do. Do not delay. For your own sake, O my God, for your city and your people are called by your name. Isn't it interesting when you get in a position of humility before God and and you set aside your life and you say, here I am, God, completely. Now you can call out to him. You call out to him for mercy. Call out to him for deliverance. Amen? Amen. When does this need to take place? Right now. Amen. Daniel 10, 1 through 3. And in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the, and the thing was true in a great conflict. And he understood the thing and had an understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no food for delight. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Nor did I anoint myself, anoint myself at all until three whole weeks were fulfilled. So there was a lot of things he was fasting, wasn't it? He didn't even, he didn't even take a bath, I guess. 
And this is a different kind of a fast that he, he did. He said, I didn't eat anything that would make me happy. I left out all the desserts, right? Um, and what was he doing? He was doing it on behalf of the people. So let's keep going here. Did it make a difference? Huge. Matthew 4, 2. Remember, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days and nights. Kind of sounds like Moses, doesn't it? There was a preparation of what God was going to do in Jesus that required this time of being set aside. You think, Jesus, you're the son of God. I've, I've read this. You know, I was reading this uh, a story to, to Brayden the other night, and it said Jesus did these things because he was the son of God. And you know what? Not necessarily. He came to be a man. He did things as a man. And when he went into the wilderness, he went as a man. But what was he getting prepared for? He was preparing for a ministry that only he could do as a result of his preparation. Amen? There's a preparation for ministry in our life that will never take place until we choose to say God's bigger in my life than something else. Do we want things to just keep going on? You know, we can, we'll go to heaven and it'll be okay. But did we really accomplish because there's a preparation that requires this precedence of prayer and fasting. Remember what happened when he came out of that? That's when he, that's when he went into the temple, I believe, and said, uh, uh, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he began his ministry as a result of that. Did it make a difference? He could have said, ah, man, I, I like eating. You know, in fact, that was his temptation when he got to the end of it, right? What did he come back with? He came back with the word of God. What does he say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Mark 9, 14 through 29. So I'm just going to read through this. We're familiar with this, but I want to just point out some things. And coming to his disciples, he saw a great crowd around them and the scribes urging, arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd seeing him were greatly amazed and they were running to get uh, to him to greet him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? And one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I have brought my son who has a dumb spirit to you. And wherever he seizes him, he dashes him. And he foams and gnashes his teeth and pines away. And I spoke to your disciples and they should, that they should cast him out. And they could not. And he answered them and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him to him. And when he saw him, the spirit immediately convulsed him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long ago has it been since this came to him? And he said, from childhood. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. The, the problem wasn't in the, in the method, what was being spoken. It's not the declaration. It's not how loud it's spoken. It's the belief. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Don't you like that? And seeing that a crowd is running together, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, Dumb and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried out, throwing him into, the, into convulsions and came out of him. And he was like one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And he entering into a house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? And he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing except prayer and fasting. How many know Jesus had that time in the wilderness, but he had periods of time. It's like when you fast. Why? Because it makes a difference. When you brush your teeth. When you take a shower. Hopefully, right? <laughs> what difference does it make if I, if, I, if I take care of things? It'll just get bad anyway. 
No. They're taken care of because of where they're taking you to. Right? Um, so, for there to be authority over things in our life and for our, the weapons of our warfare to be mighty through God to the pulling of strongholds, there's going to be preparation that includes fasting. You cannot talk to a spirit that you've been hanging out with and expect them to run off. And you might not be, it might not be that spirit you're talking to right now, but you don't know who his cronies are, and they are the ones that you do like to hang out with. That's why we need the spirit to help us in this. God, what in my life is not acceptable unto you? Amen? And that's what we're doing when we're going into a time of fast. God, help me in this. Amen? All right, I just have a couple more. Are you good? So we've been talking about this. There's a necessity, and, and I was thinking about this with regard to, to uh, um, what Travis was talking about too. We need direction for this next year. But this doesn't come just by a prophetic word. This become, comes from a, a transformed, prepared life. Or we're committed to this. How are we gonna see the future different or direction for our life? It's gonna come from having our eyes fixed on the one from whom it'll come and diverted from those things that we've relied upon before. There's a relying upon just for life. There's a relying upon for our emotions, for our comfort, little things in our life. They're not all necessarily wrong. That's why we don't just... Com- Fast all our life. It didn't say Jesus fasted for three years, you know. <laughs> he fasted for a period. But there's things in our life that God wants to say, you know, you don't need to be doing that. At least for this period. Amen? And what it does is it will give you, your eyes can now be opened so that the Spirit can give you direction. But as long as you're looking to other things in your life for direction, how can God show you? As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, did they, what were they doing? They were praising God, but they were also saying, okay, in this time, I'm also going to deny my flesh. I'm going to say no. So then separate Barnabas and Saul to me for the work to which I have called them. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they let them go. Can you see how there's, this, this pattern in, in our life and this opportunity we have in the next 21 days, it makes a difference. And it'll make as much difference as we give to it. Amen? I just have a couple things here. James 4, 8. What, what difference does it make? Draw near to God. How many want God to draw near to you? <laughs> that happens when we draw near to him. Amen? And drawing near to him does not, is not something that you, you take all your junk with you. God, I just want to bring all my junk as I draw near to you. No, you come as you are. I mean, Billy Graham, everybody knows the Billy Graham song, you know. But, but, but when you come, he says, okay, I love you so much, you don't have to carry all that stuff anymore. I free you of those things. Amen? Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, double-minded ones. He's talking about drawing near, isn't he? There will need to be a cleansing. And real quick, I, uh, the things I'm going to be doing the next uh, 21 days, I, I created a group on the, on the church app. So if you want to participate in that, I'm not sure what's going on in all the other social media. So I thought we'll just keep it in the app if we can do that. All right. Um, so you'll need to go in there and opt into it. I created a group. So I think, it, I think it's going to post actually at noon today. So. Um, but I was talking about coming out from among them and being separate. You know, and that's something that's up to us. It says, and, and then you'll be my child, and then you'll be received by me. This is New Testament. The coming out, that's upon us. We have to cleanse our, our hands. And say, like, don't you call me a sinner. I'm saved by grace. Well, there's also things that says, don't let anybody say that they haven't sinned. There's a need to say, God, I, I, I am. You are the Holy One. I don't come in my righteousness. I come, in, I come to your righteousness. Amen? 
and allow those things, allow those things, those weights of this world to be purified. He does it for us. We just come to him. Amen? So, one more. 1 John 3, 21 through 22. Beloved, if your heart does not accuse you, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. What does fasting do? It allows us to gain confidence towards God. We say, God, I'm removing everything else. I'm going to have confidence towards you. And then what I ask, every time this happens, Moses, all these examples, you have an ability to ask of God with confidence when you fasted things of this life before him. Amen? Does it make a difference? I just had this statement come to me, and I thought it was, thought it was appropriate here. The greatest challenge to our fulfillment of purpose in the kingdom will not be in the persuasion of God. You know, sometimes we think about prayer as being something where we got to go persuade God to do this and do that. We think, okay, now if I'm going to persuade him correctly, I'm going to do it according to his word. You know, so we get some scriptures, so we pray on that. And that's good too, you know. But how does prayer become effective? It's when our confidence is right towards him, isn't it? And that comes from a preparation that, that, that fasting brings a possibility for. It's but rather the silencing of the voice of our flesh in the presence of God. It's not upon us to persuade God to, to do something, but for us to silence our flesh in the presence of a most holy God. For it to not be heard when God is actually speaking. Okay? So I just want to challenge us in, the, in, these, in these days to come. And, and we can do it. Let, let's, let's let this be a pattern for us. If we can do this. Remember Daniel did. They did it three times a day. If we can just say, God, I'm, this means something to me. I'm going to spend some time with you. I'm going to, I'm going to document what you speak to me. I need things to change in my life. I do not want to be the same at the end of this time. Yeah. I want to be the one that changes. <laughs> so, so many times we want things to change in our life. I want me to change. Because I know the other things will change if I can change. Amen? So three things I, I believe need to take place in fasting. And we can, let's apply these um, daily I made a little calendar back there. If you guys want to avail yourself to that, it just has all the days that, that we're set, setting aside for fasting. And you can put a reference on there. Um, you can uh, say what you're fasting for a particular day. You can do de- things in different ways. Um, how many got an email from me um, in the last day, I think it was? Uh, and I think Pastor Kim posted it on Facebook too, I believe. You might, you might just reference that. It kind of, our, our nation is really in need of us right now. Yeah. I'm really in need of, of this. Yeah. This is where our comfort comes from. It, it doesn't come from the resolution of issues the way we want them to. It comes in the presence of God, and then we can affect the resolution when we're taking our place the way it needs to be. Amen? So separate the flesh as a hindrance from the presence of God. Let's, let's go before God. If we let's do it three times a day and say, God, here I am. I, I'm getting I'm, I'm setting aside this part of my flesh, but what I want you to do is to cleanse me. Make me right in your presence. Amen. Magnify God through his word. Let's let's find something about him. You know, they, they had all the praisers just talking about the beauty of his holiness. Man, give that a go sometimes. Say, God, I just I just want to praise you for how holy you are. It's amazing. There's, there's nothing out of line in you. You're just perfect. And you know, this doesn't have to be a, a long extended thing, but man, let's just take this time and let's set it aside when we would be doing something else and cast all, cast cares upon him in faith. Now, what that, that will be is anything that you're up against in, in life, anything that you're wanting to have a change in, our nation. Let's affect our nation. But let's cast it as a care upon him. Let's don't take on the weight of it ourselves, Amen? Don't feel like it's something that, that we're, we're having to, to storm the gates of hell ourselves. No, our weapons, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. And they come with confidence towards God. Amen? 
So let's, let's can we have, I, I wanted to kind of make it simple, but can we have a, just a three aspect thing? Let's just come in there and say, God, I'm separating myself from my flesh. It's not my God. You're my God. And I'm going to exalt you as God. And now behold this stuff. Man, compared to you, it's small. Compared to you, it's nothing. And so now I can speak to it. And it has to go. Because my confidence has been prepared in a place of fasting before God. Amen? Does it make a difference? Let's make a difference in these next few days. Can we do that? Let's establish a pattern for our lives that is a fasting life. Amen?